Welcome, everybody. It is a joy to gather today. We celebrated Confirmation and Pentecost last week, and this week is the Sunday of the Trinity, Holy Trinity Sunday, and as a festival Sunday also, so we'll be having uh, communion today. And to remind, we have the little um, packets if you prefer to do that. Otherwise, when you come up, I will give you a communion wafer, and then the assistant will give you a um, little cup of wine. And then right here, um, we've got a little spot to dispose of the wine cups, to set the wine cups. All right? And we will be a reminder to, the, um, to myself and to the communion assistants. We'll put a mask on while we are doing that. Well, friends, let us arise and join in confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake. God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also and with you. With you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. For this Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God, power and riches and wisdom and strength, and honor and blessing and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Oh, alleluia, alleluia. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Today's reading is from Proverbs, chapter 8, verses 1 through 4 and 22 through 31. A reading from Proverbs. Does not wisdom call and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries out, to you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago I was set up, at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth, when there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields or the world's first bits of soil, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John in the 16th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of our Lord. Father, we give you thanks for revealing yourself to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit so that we might understand better the mysteries of who you are as our Lord and God. And we pray that you will keep us in the faith, filled with love and mercy and kindness. In Jesus' name, amen. If I was to give you a blank sheet of paper and a few crayons or markers or pencil or whatever the case may be that you like to draw with, how would you draw a picture of God? What would you draw? A face, okay, a face of God, a big heart, anyone else? The sun, cross, hands. hands. There might be a number of things that we would draw, wouldn't there, to help signify who God is and who God is to us. Um, I don't know if I draw the face of God because the, New, the Old Testament says if you look upon the face of God, you'll die. <laughs> That's okay. Actually, with um, one of our young men, we did this, and he talked me through drawing God uh, in the children's sermon. And I know this would be a little bit hard to see, so I thickened it up real well. But first, he told me to draw hair. And I had three crayons, so I said, what hair color should we draw? And we decided on red, because he had red hair. 
And so he had a hair. And then he had a face, and then eyes, and a nose, and a mouth, and then a body in a robe, and then hands on the body, and then feet, and finally a beard. And I asked if he had a mustache, and he said no. So we had an old, good old fashioned beard just on the bottom. And this picture, or this kind of picture, including the face, is the kind of picture that artists have created to paint God throughout the centuries, isn't it? That God is often pictured, you know, God is wise, so God's got to be old, and God's older than dirt, so nobody got that. <laughs> I'll say it again. God's older than dirt, so we know his hair is white. <clears throat> it could be red because God is forever. He's eternal, so maybe he doesn't age. And <clears throat> He speaks to us, so he's got to have a mouth, and so on and so forth. He sits on a throne. And so we might make a picture of God, very traditional um, in terms of the history of art and faith. Now, then I drew a different picture of God, because today is Holy Trinity Sunday. So I drew the Holy Trinity picture of God, and that one you should be able to see better. What did I draw? A triangle. A triangle. And it's probably hard to tell. There's three colors in the triangle. One color for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Trinity. How many lines do I have? Three. three. How many colors do I have? Three. three. How many triangles do I have? One. one. And so God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one, but this three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, are you completely versed in how in the world would such a thing work? I'm not. But it is the foundation of Christianity faith. It is one of the foundational doctrines. I was at a town hall with one of our bishops from long ago, and I don't know if somebody asked him a question um, about it, but he referred to a certain um, religious group and <clears throat> he said they are not Christians he pronounced this religious group was not Christian why? they did not believe in the Holy Trinity and it has been foundational through the ages of Christianity when God kind of first revealed God's self to Moses thousands of years ago, God never told Moses what he looked like. There was this prohibition, you know, you look on the face of God and you will die. Just, and I don't know exactly what that means, whether the face of God is just so awesome it's going to stop your heart. But at any rate, um, and probably means that we are not holy enough to be in that presence of God, and so we would be judged. It's hard, I don't know. But God, God's self, is not described. And yet, there is an ancient creed, which is the foundational creed of uh, Judaism, and is part of this whole concept of one God in three persons, or three persons in one, but this oneness, and that is in Deuteronomy. In chapter 6, well, through the whole book of Deuteronomy, Moses is giving his sort of fell, farewell speeches to the people, just like Jesus does in John 13, 14, 15, 16, um, at the, toward the end of the Gospel of John, before he is arrested and put to death. And Moses was soon to die. So Moses said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your strength and with all your soul. And you shall remember it in the morning, remember it in the evening, teach it to your children, keep it always with you, talk about it. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Now at that time in history, they didn't so much yet have a concept of monotheism, that there's only one God, period. 
Even in the beginning of the Ten Commandments, you shall have no other gods before me. Other gods were out there, everywhere. It took time for them, finally, with uh, the prophets to say, listen, those other gods are just ash. They're just stone and wood, and there is nothing there at all. But they focused on he is one. And another way to translate it is the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. There is nothing else in this world that we should ever consider as a God, to give place of God. But there is still no picture of God. Even Moses, when he was up the mountain, was in a cloud. And so, in Christianity, we have the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and that is our God alone. And frankly, no other gods exist, they're lies, they're false. But we also have Matthew telling us at the end, Jesus telling us in the Gospel of Matthew, at the end of his ministry, before he ascends, go out into the nations, baptizing them, all nations, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now, how many gods does that sound like? Three. And yet it's one. <coughs> and so we draw triangles on a piece of paper in three different colors and say, yes, but it's still one triangle. But finally, that is not the picture of God that is central all the way through the scriptures. In our gospel lesson today, as Jesus is saying goodbye to the disciples, he says, you know, I am going to ascend and I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth. And he says, in a number of places in John, everything that I have spoken to you, everything that I have done, where did it come from? The Father. It came from the Father. Jesus, when he was born and when he grew up, he didn't um, <coughs> go over with some of his friends and say, Phew, boy, Jim, I am really happy to be out of that house. My dad is so <coughs> uh, bossy and everything's got to be done his way and he thinks he knows everything just because he created it. Phew. Boy, now I'm going to do things my way. Did Jesus say that? No. He says, I came from the Father, and I give you what the Father has given me to give you. Not a jot or tittle else. And when I go back to the Father, I will give you the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will give you what I have given you and continue to teach you and guide you and lead you and comfort you and bless you as you are the children of God and as you are the church in the world. So maybe we can make symbols for God and we can draw paintings of an old man Pretty soon, I know, they're going to come and knock on my door and say, hey, Pastor Dan, we'd like you to sit for a painting of God. <laughs> I don't know. And it's going to turn out like that, <laughs> which will be nice. Actually, it'll be very abstract, and we won't know what it is at all. So what is the most important thing to learn about God if it is not how God looks? And I'll tell you one other piece about this God looking. At the very end of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, John is taken up into the heavens and he gets to see all of this really bizarre theological, human, spiritual history unfold 
and the first thing that he does is they take him to the throne of God. And he says, I saw one sitting on the throne. And he looked like Jasper and Beryl. No, cardamom, not cardamom. Anyway, I've got it right here. We'll get it straight. It was not Swedish spices. Carnelian. Thank you. You remembered. At once I was in the spirit, and there in heaven stood a throne with one seated on the throne, and the one seated on the throne there looks like Jasper and Carnelian, and around the throne is a rainbow that looks like an emerald. Well, that tells it all, doesn't it? <laughs> Jasper and Carnelian, do you know what they are? Gemstones. They're red gemstones. And the rainbow around that God has his mercy for all creation since the days of Noah. But he doesn't, he's seen God by golly, and he doesn't tell us what he looks like so we can get the painting right. He just turns to tell us all about the cherubim and the living creatures and this thing. He just, he's fascinated by the angels. Forget God. So what if the scripture avoids giving us a picture of God that we might turn into some kind of idol of our own, what is the most important thing that the scripture tells us about God? His love. His character. It tells us about how God feels and treats us. And the Son coming from the Father said at the beginning of the Gospel of John, God so loved the world. He loved it all, this great, broken, sinful world. He so loved it that He gave His only Son, the Son of God, Jesus the Christ, so that all who believe in Him May, have, may not perish, but may have eternal life. And then over and over, from the beginning through the prophets, the goodness and mercy and the steadfast love of God in the Psalms and all through the Scripture, the Scripture is trying to teach us that God, for all the judgmental picture of Him and for all the discernment of God, that even in our sinfulness, God loved us and He wanted us to be His children and His church and His people in this life and in the life to come and in a new creation. And how is He going to do it? He's going to send Jesus. And when Jesus does His work, and when Jesus ascends, then Jesus sends the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So tell me, the love with which God the Father so loved us, is that the same love with which Jesus loved us and revealed to us? You think? And the love that Jesus revealed to us, is that the same love with which the Spirit comes to us? Yes. This is the oneness of God. It is this absolute continuity of love and will, the will of salvation for the world. Jesus, the Father, the Spirit, who come to us in love and mercy, the forgiveness of sin and the promise of everlasting life. And in that will, the Father is the Son and the Son is the Spirit and the Spirit is the Father and the Son is the Father and onward and so forth, as distinct as they might be, one, one God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that come to us with one unconditional, merciful love. 
ever and always. And they will not be pushed aside. They will not waver. They will not suddenly split up like a bomb. They are one. And they love us. Amen. Church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. One God, giver of life, you established peace through your Son and gave your church the hope of sharing in your glory. Enliven us by your Spirit to speak and act in love for the sake of the world. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Creator of all, you rejoice in creation and, give, and have given humankind responsibility for the works of your hands. Instill in everyone your spirit of care for the earth, especially in areas threatened by ecological devastation. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving Redeemer, you delight in the human race. Move the hearts of world leaders to seek wisdom, speak truth, and care for all endangered by poverty, prejudice, or violence. Further the work of international collaboration and peacemaking. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Abiding Comforter, you call out to all who live. Restore severed relationships and protect children who lack trustworthy caregivers. Grant hope to those who are experiencing pain, fear, or grief. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Holy Three, you are community and you create community. Build up ministries that support those who are isolated or lonely. Give endurance as we nurture vital relationships in our congregation and beyond. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Tend to all <clears throat> in need of your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcast. Shelter all who are vulnerable in body, mind, or spirit. We pray this day for Sandy, Debbie, Bonnie, Cindy, Joe, Cecilia, Diane, Anneli, Chuck, Rebecca, Ron, the family of Omer Jones, and those we'll name aloud are in our hearts before you. And Gia. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Holy God, we remember your saints for their strong faith and witness, even unto death. Console grieving families, stir up in us the resolve to end the sin of white supremacy and pursue the courageous path of justice. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please greet one another in peace. Undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of the angels, 
with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy. Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at this end of all ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed, and was obedient to your will, even to the giving of his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Therefore, O God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us, and believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live with the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him with him in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgave those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's presence there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet.
Państwie witują. Panie Państwie witają. Panie Państwie witają. Panie Państwie witają. Panie Państwie Panie Państwie witają. Panie Państwie witają. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let everyone who seeks the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He recalls
life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace and give you peace and give you peace forever. The Lord is gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace, and give you peace, and give you peace forever. Amen. Go in peace, love your neighbor. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.